Hello again, grace and peace. Um, this is Pastor Ralph Michael Rivera, and I want to thank you for joining us uh, for today's uh, devotional. Uh, let's begin with a brief prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you at this moment in time, and, and we want to thank you first and foremost, Father, for another week of life, Lord, for providing us with most of the things that we require, Lord, and some of the things that we would like to have, Father. We want to thank you, Lord, above all things for our salvation, for helping us, oh Lord, dear God, to be able to come to you and to confess our sins and in the name of your son, Jesus, and to have those sins washed away and for our souls and our spirits, Lord, to become white once again like the snow, like the snow, Lord. We thank you for that, Father. We ask, O oh Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit at this time to intervene on our behalves and that you utilize me as a vessel, Father, to deliver your message and not mine, that you speak to us, O oh Lord, dear God, on this day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So to begin, uh, I'd like to say that uh, I was watching the news and they were forecasting uh, this nor'easter that was headed our way. And as I sat there looking at the technology that was available to allow and to enable uh, these forecasters to be able to, to forecast uh, the storms and you could just see the clouds and you know I'm not uh, a storm specialist or anything like that as far as the jargon and the terminology is concerned but you know it's pretty amazing when we really stop and think about just that alone the ability to forecast the weather that is going to come and and it served as a warning they, the, the newscaster the uh, the gentleman telling the, the weather the weather reporter uh, was forecasting uh, that there was going to be a nor'easter and they were actually able to even talk about the amount of snow that they were going to uh, accumulate in, in, in different regions and you know I just found that to be just so amazing that you know we are able to have this type of technology to, to warn us and to tell us hey bad weather's coming uh, go get food uh, prepare yourself and that's the word I want to focus on prepare yourself for what is is going to come now what has happened through the years as far as you know I'm concerned and a lot of people in my neighborhood uh, you know there was a point in time that the forecasters would say that snow was coming and people would go and run to the supermarkets and and the shelves would be emptied and they'd run to places like Home Depot and Lowe's to get rock salt and all kinds of the supplies that they would need you know to to, to make sure that they were able to dig themselves out and you know uh, and clean off the car and, 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 and make sure that the ground that they walked on was safe and sturdy and comfortable with the rock salt and as I sat there thinking about all that, I found myself saying, well, you know, that's kind of sort of what the Holy Spirit does for us. Amen? It, uh, it, it, it forecasts and tells us, hey, Jesus is coming soon, and, 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 and we need to prepare ourselves. Are you ready? <laughs> Am I ready? I mean, this is what I said to myself. I was like, amazing. You know, God sent his, his, his message uh, his messenger, you know, he he sent his word, he sent the Bible, he sent Jesus, his his one and only son, to to to, to, to tell us to to forecast, <laughs> to lay it out, and just like the weather people do. They lay it out. They say, well, in this area, there's going to be an accumulation of 12 to 18 inches, and over here, possibly six to eight, so on and so forth. And then they even show you like the dark weather bands, and you can actually see that these clouds are actually a, a darker gray, so that you could see. Well, the Lord our God sent us a book called the Bible that forecasts and predicts and prophesizes all the things that are going to come and all the things that are going to happen. And many of us, uh, we change the channel and we change the page or we close the Bible because we don't want to hear about what's being forecast, what's being predicted, what's being prophesied to occur. We just want to close our curtains and, and turn on the TV and change the channel and, and hope beyond all hope that you know, the snow is not going to fall this time. 
like it's happened many a times in the past. Uh, the, they, the weather people, they predict the snow's 18 inches. Oh, the nor'easter, it's gonna snow like crazy. And all of us run out and we, and, we, and we do what we do to prepare ourselves for that particular storm. And we make sure that when, by the time the first snowflake falls, we have all our shovels, we have all our rocks off, uh, we have uh, all the things we're gonna need, gloves, uh, thermal socks, and things that we haven't seen all summer long that we put away last winter and just can't seem to remember where they're at. We find all those things, and that's the same type of energy I encourage each and every one of you to put into uh, what's going to happen and what's being forecast to, to occur throughout the Bible. Jesus is coming, and we need to prepare ourselves. Amen, brothers and sisters. Notice I said we, because nobody's perfect. We need to pay attention to what's being prophesied, to that forecast. What would happen, for example, if we didn't pay attention to the forecast, we went to bed, we woke up in the morning, and we just went about our business like it was just a regular day. And we kissed our wives and husbands goodbye. Okay, have a great day. I'll see you later. And we opened up the door, and we just walked out into the storm. Dressed inappropriately. No scarf, no gloves, no coat. No boots. What would happen? Okay, we'd make it to the car, we'd warm it up, and just say we didn't even prepare, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the shovel our way so we could get to the vehicle. We slip on the ice because we didn't have the salt that we needed. How many of you are following me? We need to be prepared, and, and God has given us the opportunity. He, listen, he sent the Bible so that, uh, so we could, benefit the prophecies and, 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 and be recipients of, 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 of his son who we love so much so that we could be forgiven so that we don't get snowed in so that we don't die do you know you could die of frostbite and you could literally freeze to death <laughs> if you're not prepared if you're not dressed right and you go out into that type of weather into those elements surely surely you could perish the same could be said about the Word of God. The same could be said about our salvation. The same could be said about the promises that are sent to us in the good book. Amen? I came across something on Facebook, and I want to share it with you, and it says this in, in regards to being ready. It says, how does the thief on the cross fit into your theology? Listen to this. It says, no baptism, no communion, no confirmation, no speaking in tongues, no mission trip, no volunteerism, and no church clothes. He couldn't even bend his knees to pray. He didn't say the sinner's prayer, and among other things, he was a thief. Jesus didn't take away his pain, heal his body, or smile, or smite the scoffers. Yet it was a thief who walked into heaven the same hour as Jesus, simply by his believing. Do you believe the forecast, the prophecies, the inclement weather that is sure to come? It says that this thief, while he had nothing more to offer other than his belief that Jesus was who he said he was. Hmm. No spin from brilliant theologians, theologians, excuse me, no ego or arrogance, no shiny lights, skinny jeans or crafty words, no haze machine, donuts or coffee in the entrance, just a naked dying man on a cross, unable to even fold his hands to pray. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 As I read that, I was reminded of the simplicity of the gospel. And it encouraged me to pay attention as I encourage each and every one of you to pay attention, to prepare yourselves for what is forecast to occur. Christ is coming. God bless each and every one of you. And remember, how does the thief on the cross fit into your theology? <laughs> no baptism and no communion. No confirmation. No speaking in tongues, no mission trip, no volunteerism. And no church clothes. He couldn't even bend his knees to pray. Yet it was a thief who walked into heaven. The same hour as Jesus, simply by believing. Grace and peace, brothers. I'm Pastor Ralph Michael Rivera. 
Be blessed this week. And believe.